So in this video, I'm going to talk about Nexus. Uh, we got uh, Nexus 9000, the virtual edition. If you're able to get it from Cisco website, which uh, you should be able to, um, if you have any kind of a relation with Cisco. But if you have it, what I did was I tried this guy on ESXi. I tried it on uh, uh, the VMware player and uh, the only thing that actually worked uh, after going through all the documentation was the VBox and again the documentation is not very clear in a lot of things so I'm gonna show you how to do the VBox uh, installation once you download the box image with the box extension um, you would go and rename this guy into an OVA. So for example, if the image is 9000 v.box, you're going to rename this guy to 9000 v.ova and then import this into virtualbox. Once you import it into the virtual box, you would, by default, it goes with six gig. You're gonna have to change this to eight gig. It's not gonna work. And that this is the memory, obviously. And your CPU is two is good. And I'll show you all that. And then your interfaces, would be desktop, which is the default. So your interface would be desktop. And their promiscuous mode would be allow all. Once you have this, what I did was I installed two instances of VirtualBox, connected their Ethernet 1 slash 1 with the internal network. The first one is management. The first adapter is management. So that would be your VirtualBox adapter. your second adapter in virtual box is going to be ethernet 1.1 and I connected that to an internal network called n1 make sure that the interface was allow all and when I brought it up obviously it wasn't coming up because they have uh, not sorted out how to do the console. So what you're going to have to do for the console is I used PuTTY. You know, when you bring up the virtual machine, it's just going to stay in one place. It's actually running in the background. It's not showing you anything. So to get the, the CLI, you're going to have to go to, I used PuTTY, and you will have to go in the virtual box serial port and you have to define serial as a host pipe. So in my case I did host pipe Uh, whatever the virtual machine name is, right? Nexus one. And then once you do all of this stuff, rename it to OVA, change this default six gig to eight gig, uh, two CPU is by default. You can go higher if you want. And then change the interface to allow all. Uh, and then the serial, this is important because the default virtual box console is not going to work. So you're going to have to use PuTTY or something similar and configure the virtual box serial into an host pipe.
So this is how I will demonstrate this to you. First, let me show you that these instances are working. They get stuck right here. As you can see here, they get stuck here, the screen. They don't show anything. So, but when you go in the putty, then you will get this instance running with this pipe, host pipe. And I can also, I've configured the two interfaces and OSPF with VOS. So let me just show you that it's working. This guy's show interface status. First one is E11. Show run interface E11. You have, oh yeah, you have to configure the Mac address. I forgot that one. Show run interface E11. Make sure you put a unique MAC address, otherwise it's not gonna ping. So once you do that, you should be able to ping your network on this side. And I've also configured OSPF. There it is. And then I'm getting this route 21 from VOS, which is this guy. So I put VOS up there and I run show IP OSP of neighbors and I've got two neighbors these are the Nexus switches oh, 9000 bs so you will have to make sure that you do one more thing and that is going to be your interface MAC addresses Let's go take a look at the Wurzel box. Here is my Nexus and the setting for the first one is, let's go through the system, eight gig processor two and network first one is virtual box because that's the management desktop this is e11 desktop allow all internal desktop allow all and here's the serial port port one com one this is by default if you choose like if you go uh, I'll show you how it looks like, but you, you know, you don't have to choose COM1, it'll automatically select the one that's available. You're going to select host pipe, user defined here, host pipe, don't select this guy. And then the address of the, the pipe, which in this case is your machine name with slash slash dot slash pipe slash machine name, just exactly like this. Once you do that, you would be able to go to Putty and you would go to Putty and you would go and define your session. like this, 9,600 baud rate serial, and make sure you save it, and then when you open it, it'll open up the session like this. So again, the steps, uh, if you follow these, this is what worked for me, obviously, I only went and, and, and did with the ESXi first, and did not work with all the console stuff that they recommended in their documentation. I went into the VMware player, did not work. It doesn't give you any option to customize anything. But with a VBox, obviously uh, the only image that you can download is the with the dot box. And then you're gonna rename that to OVA and then import that into uh, VirtualBox and then change all this stuff and then you should be able to get 
uh, all this working. And uh, but once you get it working, obviously the Nexus 93,000 9, can do a VX lands and it can do BGP uh, EVPN. So these are the things that you can, uh, you know, try it out. So you got the Cisco Nexus and then you have the Arista switch that can do EVPN. So you got both the vendors. I wish Juniper had one, but uh, I, so far I don't, I don't see anything that they have published out there. But uh, once you get the software, which is 9,000 V, uh, you should, with all this customization, you should be able to get this working. Hope this helps.